The whole Lamar Jackson saga was very interesting last season. I mean, it's very uncommon that a team completely changes up their offensive scheme midway through a season, but that's exactly what Baltimore did. They're very much running that RPO type system. While they don't actually technically run RPOs, it's pretty much the same type idea. And really when ran well, it can be effective in three different ways. The first of which is this one. If you take a look, basically the way this play works is that opposing defenses have to be prepared of a potential Lamar Jackson run to that right side of the screen, and they also have to be prepared of a potential regular run to the middle of the screen. So now the way this basically works is that the Raiders edge rusher pretty much has to run very far to the right side of the screen, which now makes it for a very easy block for that Raven who's blocking him. And since the Ravens are double teaming that Oakland interior lineman, this now creates a huge hole on that right side of the screen. From there, at least on paper, the two Ravens who are making double teams can then get off their blocks and then block the two linebackers right over there. And there's another Raven who's breaking up in that direction to try to be a lead blocker, and he can take away that defensive back right over there, and this could be a home run type play. And while it's not actually going to end up working out that way for Baltimore because not everyone makes their blocks, it still is a big gain, and I think that play will show you basically how their whole system is designed to work. Them running plays like that really can be very beneficial and can allow them to pick up a ton of yards. But another way is a situation like this, where once again, a defense has to be aware of a potential run straight up the middle, and once again, they also have to be aware of a potential Lamar Jackson run to the bottom half of the screen, meaning that that Raider right there could end up being the containment if it is a run in that direction. So now if you look, the Baltimore Raven right over there is going to basically fake as though it's going to be blocking him, but then run a route deep. This now allows him to get wide open, and Lamar Jackson's able to hit him, and he's able to go a long way with it. It ends up being nearly a touchdown, basically because of the good fake. I mean, that's really another great way this system can be effective, is through the passing game. It can get guys out of position and allow receivers to get wide open. Another way is just a simple play like this. Once again, it could be just a standard run shit at the middle, and it could be a Lamar Jackson run to the top half of the screen. So now if we take a look, after the ball is snapped, that Raider pretty much has no choice but to stay right there. He has to be aware of a potential run, but of course he also is somewhat the containment on this play, because he can't just run over and tackle the halfback, because if it is a Lamar Jackson run, he can just run by him, so really he has to be right there. However, even if he is right there, Lamar Jackson can break so quickly, he has such fast acceleration, and he's just so fast in general, he's still able to run to the outside and get past that edge rusher. This is kind of what makes that system so deadly, is it's so tough to stop. Really, in theory, there's no way to stop it. However, the Chargers figured something out. Here's part of what went wrong in that wild card game. If you take a look, once again, it's set up the same way, where there could be a run to the middle, or it could be Lamar Jackson run to the outside. But one thing that was very interesting that the Chargers did was they basically just played all defensive backs. I mean, they had plays where they're having six and even seven defensive backs in the game. And that can be very effective. Like, if we take a look at what happened here, once again, it's pretty similar to that last play, where the edge rusher does move out right there, and now if it is going to be a run, he can jump up and get to the halfback, However, if it's going to be a Lamar Jackson run, he can still run to the outside. So then, once again, like last time, Lamar Jackson can still just break around, and since he is fast enough, he can get around that edge rusher. That ends up being exactly what happens, and Lamar Jackson is able to get free. However, take a look at another charger. He can now get off his block, and because he has enough speed, he can run Jackson down and make a tackle. That helped him in that regard, but it also can help him in this kind of regard. If you take a look, they're going to fake as though it's going to be run straight at the middle, and those are the routes that their receivers will be running. It's actually going to be a cover four zone, and also one thing worth mentioning is that a charger who's in charge of covering the flat on the bottom half of the screen is also going to be the contained man, essentially, where he's going to be aware of potential Lamar Jackson run. Because Jackson is running through the bottom half of the screen and looking to make a throw, this now means that the charger can move in that way and make sure Lamar Jackson can't run. Now he kind of has to throw. But of course, now there's an entire field full of defensive backs, so we can't really try to throw it in that direction either, and really he has nothing to do on this play. There was also another problem the Ravens really had throughout a large part of that game, and that was blocking. Now they kind of have to be running the ball a lot more frequently, this now means that blocking becomes that much more important, but it wasn't totally effective throughout the game. Like, if you take a look at this play, their left tackle is going to have a 1-on-1 matchup with that Chargers interior lineman right there, and then they're going to have their center and right guard double team the nose tackle, and then one of them will move off their block and block that linebacker who's up there. From there, they'll have their right tackle block the other linebacker, and they'll pull the left guard over to block the other interior lineman. And since they have a man in motion getting ready to block the edge rusher right over there, this now means that if every Raven makes their blocks, this should be an easy pickup for Baltimore. But if you notice, one thing a charger is going to do is actually go down on this play, which seems like it wouldn't be a great thing, but it actually very much is, because this now means that the man in motion can't get over to block the edge rusher. He ends up tripping over that charger, and the other charger who is in the area is able to simply run over and make a tackle. Because in this system, it basically requires a lot of Baltimore Ravens to pull over in different directions, and a lot of man in motion to then have to make blocks, it then makes getting over to make your block quickly that much more important. 
But of course, none of those video, but of course, none of those plays actually have to do with a halfback, which is kind of the big point of this video. Really, the whole point of this offense is that no matter what the defense does, it should then give you a situation where you can then create an advantage by doing something else. So, for example, if a team likes to run seven defensive backs, this should now make it a lot easier to run the ball with your halfback. Like, if we take a look at this play, for example, there's gonna be a double team on the interior lineman right there, and then there's gonna be two other Ravens who have one-on-one -on -one matchups on the right side of the screen. So basically, the way this is ideally gonna work for the Ravens is they want to kind of create a wedge, where they want to get those two chargers to move away from each other and then they're going to also put a left guard over through that hole to try to block that other charger in that area and now if you notice this actually is a great situation for the ravens i mean there's clearly a hole in between those two chargers and it should be a great way for the ravens to pick up some yards however the problem is this isn't actually going to work out too well gus edwards ends up running into an offensive lineman and then into a tight end and that kind of just brings himself down that caused him to take a lot longer to get through that hole and by that point a charger was able to run in and make a tackle and again i'm not saying this because i think gus edwards is a bad player by any means but really my whole point is if you're going to run this offense you're going to need better blocking but you're also going to need a better running back i mean this is the very real strategy teams will probably implement next season is try to use a lot of defensive backs and basically force you to run the ball with your halfback so if you have a good halfback that can be great news and the good news for the ravens is that they now have a good halfback and that guy's name is mark ingram one of the things about ingram is that he has great footwork and this play will be a perfect example if we take a look what the saints are going to do is send a man in motion to the left side of the screen but it's actually be a pitch play and gonna be a run to the right side of the screen it's a well blocked play by new orleans i don't really need to get into the intricate details because it's actually not too important on this play but if we take a look right here the play is already pretty much a win for the saints i mean it picked up some yards and this is kind of why you run these plays is because worst case scenario you still get a five yard gain however it could be a great play if you can get past that guy and at this point it seems like the pretty clear move is to try to just run over that Bengal and pick up a few more yards that's what a lot of halfbacks would do in this situation and honestly i wouldn't hate it if that's what he did i mean sometimes you do just have to run over a guy and try to pick up some yards however ingram has such great footwork look at what he's going to do here he's going to basically just cut around him and completely avoids contact with that Bengal. he does get tackled just shortly after but he picked up probably five or six more yards just from that one little move and i really think it's just an impressive move that while running at full speed to the right side of the screen he's then able to shift his body weight and cut forward this next play is another very interesting example of how effective he can be if you take a look at what the saints are going to do here it's actually pretty interesting they're going to have their right tackle have a one-on-one -on -one block with that bengal right over there and they're going to have a tight end block the interior lineman right over there and they're going to send Taysom hill out to block that bengal who's up there basically the way this works is it creates better angles to try to get a bigger hole and try to allow a halfback to run through without having to double team anybody but the problem ends up being that the bengal that Taysom hill was in charge of blocking ends up getting past him it's hard to blame hill for that one because how is he supposed to know that the bengal was just going to crash into the left side really it was just a great play by that defender but now it's a problem i mean there's a bengal clearly right on mark ingram here and there's not really much he can do but the one advantage ingram has is he knows which way the bengal is going he's basically going straight to ingram which makes a ton of sense as ingram is the guy with the ball so what ingram is going to do is basically just do a jump cut to the right side of the screen this doesn't allow him to avoid the contact at all however it definitely changes where the contact is as of right now the only place ingram is getting touched is by his left leg which isn't really too bad of a situation at all for mark ingram i mean oftentimes a guy would just fall forward and only pick up a couple of yards but ingram has such strength in those legs that he's still able to run forward and pick up a decent game despite his play being a disaster at the start of it ingram does have tremendous strength and tremendous footwork but those paired together are really what makes him so effective and really it's his footwork i think that's going to make this ravens offense really work out very well like on a play like this for example what new orleans is going to do is have the right guard and right tackle double team an interior lineman and then they're going to send their right guard up to block that linebacker right over there and then they're going to have a tight end block an edge rusher and they also have another receiver who's off screen right now who's going to move up to block that Ingles linebacker right over there so basically all this means that the edge is going to be unblocked so what's interesting here is that of course ingram at this point should try to break to the right side of the screen that's what makes a ton of sense so take a look at where his foot is planted even though his body is going straight forward his foot is very far out to the left side of the screen meaning that he can very easily on just one step move over to that side of the screen and since he is so strong and has such great length strength he can get there very quickly but to me, what's just as interesting is if you take a look, he's actually going to do the same thing on his very next step. I mean, not the exact same thing because he can't get his toes pointed into the left side of the screen the way he could earlier because how would you do that in two straight steps? But he is able to get his next step, again, very far outside. He was able to change his direction very quickly to the right side of the screen and that's going to allow him to change his direction very quickly to the left side of the screen once again. It's all from keeping your legs wide and it's also because he has the leg strength to do it and also because he has the footwork to do it and he's able to break by that Eagles defender and go for a lot of yards. I think 
think Mark Ingram is actually a match made in heaven for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, him playing with that offense just makes a ton of sense. Of course, the one downside is the fact that he's 29 years old, and as we all know, running backs don't really play too long compared to other positions. That is something I would be worried about if I was a Baltimore Ravens fan. However, that being said, if he can still play at a high level like he has played these past few seasons, I think it's a perfect fit for the Ravens. I mean, he's the type of guy that can use his footwork to his advantage, and you really can't use a bunch of defensive backs to try to beat that team because they have a good running back now. If we're being honest, the NFL is littered with running backs who were great with one team and then were never able to be good with another team, so that definitely could be a case when it comes to Mark Ingram, but that being said, I still really like the move for the Ravens and I think it's a good one for them. I think some people will be worried about a 3 year deal worth $15 million as $5 million per year for a running back that's 29, seems like it might be a bit pricey. But if you actually look at the details behind it, the first year they won't be able to cut him, but the second year they can cut him and only have to pay $3 million in dead cap, and then the next year they don't have to pay $1.3 million in dead cap. So if they do decide to cut him in future seasons, it wouldn't really affect them too much. It's kind of a low risk, high reward type play, and so I like it from the Baltimore Ravens perspective, and I look forward to seeing how he'll fit in their system next year.